Hello and welcome back to more Danganronpa. I am not going to be um, timing this episode because it's a class trial. I don't, I don't want to cut class trials short. I think that's just annoying to like make it the middle of it. And it's like, oh, sorry, this class trial is only 15 minutes long. So no, class trials are gonna stay the same length, whatever, however long it takes to do it. So yeah. I went at Harmonicum's proclamation and they were gathered by the Red Rail door. As soon as we all were all there, whatever. Whoa, what? Harmonicum appears! Hello, hello, hello! Why are there two of them? He's multiplied! Wrong. Nope, not multiplication, it just looks that way because of an illusion! I'm moving so fast it only looks like I've multiplied! <laughs> Can you guys tell which one is the real Monokuma? What the fuck? <laughs> Can we just get on the elevator already? Boy! <laughs> That's proud. You're not playing along! 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 Stop talking. We're not here to play with you. Okay. Okay, okay, fine! Hey! Hey! But if everyone's here ready to go, please board the pain train! <laughs> elevator! <laughs> I'll see you guys down there! Let's go. Okay then, shall we? Goodness, can Please. everyone stop playing games? Like, yeah, they're all rooting these shots. <laughs> Hold on, I'm not mentally prepared yet. Shit, neither am what I. What the heck? You'll never be mentally prepared. You can't run away anymore, hero. You're gonna pay for your sins. What the heck? Oh, shit. I told you already, I didn't do it, but serious. Hmm. Rem then remind us, did you ever find the other costume or the notes? <sighs> uh, well, no, but. <laughs> How unfortunate. Then it would seem we have our culprits. Uh, hey. So let's stop. This isn't the place to talk about it. Save your accusations for when we get to the courtroom. That's right. She's right. Let's get down there first. Then the story can really begin. Yeah, good idea. That's right. I have to I have to do it. I can't let whoever killed Tafumi and Taka get away with it. For everyone who's still alive. And for the two that lost their lives. That is weird though, why why kill two people? The one who killed Fumi and Taka, the one who killed two of our friends, almost said best friends. <laughs> the killer is someone right here in this goddamn room, let's go. I took one last breath and exhaled slowly, I began to walk toward the elevator. Once everyone was aboard, it started moving and we all descended into hell into a cool face. Damn, there's not very many of us left. When I see all of you gathered together like this, I realized just how few of you there are left! That's what I just said! Your school life is slowly reaching its climax! <laughs> and so am I! <sighs> just the worst! Only because of you! Whoa, Asahina, I didn't know you were in the Monokuma that much. <laughs> what, why are you making us do such cruel things to each other? What? Do you really hate me so much? But I'm so cute! Come on. Stop looping around and begin the trial. Yeah. Don't rush me! Of course I'm gonna start it! I'd never be like, stay tuned for the action pack class trial of this commercial Grey! That's what Grey does. She's a piece of shit. I'm not like her. Yeah. I'd never hold out on you like that. Like Grey does, fucking piece of shit. Okay, let's begin. Get to your assigned seats! I hate you, Grey. I fucking hate you. I just want you to know that. If I could, I'd kill you. Thanks, thanks Monokuma. Can we, can we uh, continue? Can we continue the story now? Fine! Let's begin! And so, the curtain opened once again. A deadly judgment. A deadly deception. A deadly betrayal. A deadly riddle. A deadly defense. A deadly faith. A deadly... Class trial! Oh my god, do you have to say that every time? Literally, do you have to say it every time? Can I do different scales? Why well, don't I have three? Like, I feel like I should have more than three. S uh, why don't I have more? No, 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 no. Okay. I am mad. What's this? Smoke's gauge covers more quickly, effective during the non stop debate, the hangman's gambit, and the bullet time battle. So, does that mean that I just, like, take this one off and go to that one? Oh, can I have both? Oh, I have the 
have 17. I have 7. Oh my god, I'm using 7 of 17. That's what that is. Wow, I feel dumb, guys. Don't judge. We're not fucking ready for this at all. Whatever. Let's just fucking, just fucking begin go, man. with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, You're if welcome, you Turo, can figure happened. out and you can pile punish stuff in case. Now, you know who did it. Shut up. No. It was Hero. He does not have an alibi for when the murders took place, and we found him in that suit. Don't try and deny it! You killed them! I didn't! Someone knocked me out! I, I was asleep the whole time! I don't know anything about it! They must see that, like, on the left-hand side, side, he's all calm, and then, like, in the middle, he's all freaking out. No? Just me? Okay. Shut your murdering mouth, murderer! Who are you calling a murderer? I am sorry to say, Hero, but we do have evidence. Blueprint for the suit. Parts we assume were used to build it. And all of it was found in your room. You have to admit, the evidence is quite compelling. God, Celeste, why do I think it's you? Like, you just, you just feel, it just feels like she did this. Like, she has everything thought out. Like... It points to you as having created the suit and wearing it while committing crime after... How many times do I have to tell you? I, I... I don't know, I don't know, I don't know! Is Joe really the killer? Or for anything else, we have to make that clear. No, he obviously doesn't know what the fuck is going on. Make your argument. You have to hear his message. Everything we found in your room. The blueprints, the suit parts, they are all proof enough that you are the culprit. I don't know anything about that stuff! It's not true, it's a conspiracy! Hero, why? Why did you kill them? No! Just hold on a oh, second! Okay, I totally missed out on something. And look at the broke prints, that handwriting is awfully messy. Remember things? Okay, so we we'll, gotta Everything go to the blueprints. Everything we found in your room. The blueprints, the suit parts, they are that you are. The oh conference. my god, I missed it! It's not true, it's Hero, why? No! Just. Hold on a second! I'm so mad, how the fuck did I miss it? Everything we found in your room. The blueprints, the suit parts, they are... No, it's wrong! God. Break. <laughs> are we sure Hero really made those blueprints? What do you mean? Well, take a look at this. It's the note that Hero wrote. Asking everyone to meet up after Alter Ego disappeared. The handwriting's obviously different. Wouldn't you say? When you compare it to the blueprints, there's no way you could think the same person made both of them. Unless that person made it a point to disguise their handwriting. No, the differences are bigger than that, I think. Come on! I'm not smart enough to think of trying to change my handwriting anyway. Right? So, Makoto, are you saying you don't think Hiro's the culprit? And he's not the only one. I think Hiro is innocent as well. Oh, thanks, Piakia, for the blowjob. Who was in that Robo Justice suit? Is it like Hero said? Was there really someone running around in a second suit? Possibly. The suspicious individual hidden within the suit. Go ahead, Makoto. Tell them who it was. Of course, he passes it off to me. So, who was in the Robo Justice suit? The suspicious, suspicious individual in question. The one that it has to be. The Illuminati hero or Hina. What? I got it! Other than Hero, I can't think of anyone else it could have been. Obviously, he was the one in that particular suit. And we never found any kind of second suit. Then there can be no doubt. Hero is the prime suspect. That doesn't make any sense! You just said Hero didn't do it! It makes perfect sense. Hero was the suspicious individual in the suit, but he's not the culprit. So what you're saying is... That's right. The culprit in this case has nothing to do with being in the robo-justice suit. What? Hmm. Now that's a bold well, yeah, assumption. Yeah, I asleep the whole time. And what reason do you have to make such a statement? You do have a reason, yes? Of well, course. So but before we get to that, there's something else we need to clarify first. So let's get that out of the way. Hey, stop trying to boss us around! All things have a proper order. So what is it? What needs to be clarified? 
we must clarify the method of transportation for Taka's lifeless body. Oh, where do you know that? It would seem that his corpse was moved using certain particular items. Makoto, can you tell us what they were? Of course I can. The things that were used with Taka's body, they must have been the dolly. I got it! Still one more thing. The thing that were used to use Taka's body, they must have been... And that. I got it! They were a dolly and a tarp, right? Correct! What's with the attitude? So, let's see if I can explain. Right, right? He like, asked me to explain Papa's it. Body all mad. disappeared from the equipment room. And then we rediscovered it in the repository. And when we found it for the second time, it was wrapped in a blue tarp, right? It was the same tarp that up until then was stored in the equipment room. So the killer must have seen it there and decided to use it when they moved Taka's body. That way, they wouldn't leave any bloodstains while they were moving it. Okay, that explains the tarp. And the dolly? Same thing. I'm sure the dolly was in the equipment room when we first found Taka's body there. But when the body disappeared, so did the doll. Okay. Later, when Taka's body reappeared in the repository, so did the dolly with so blood did... on it. In other words, you think they used the dolly to move the body. Am I right? But are you sure you are not mistaken? Huh? Are you absolutely positive the dolly was in the equipment room when we found Taka's body? That dolly was made specifically for moving large objects between the repository and the art room. It would be very strange indeed to discover it had made its way to the equipment room. Is it not possible that it was in the repository all along and you simply didn't realize it? She's raised an objection. How do you respond? There is no shame in being wrong. Nobody expects much from you anyway. We have all Thanks, accepted Alice. the fact that you rarely understand what is going on around you. Celeste, what the fuck is your problem? I've never had anyone sound so nice while being so mean, but maybe I can change her mind. I can just explain to them why the dolly must have been moved from the equipment room to the repository. A new element has been added to the time battles. Uh, oh shit. I almost said no. Let's talk about reloading. What? Starting with this next bullet time battle, we're gonna add one more ingredient to the recipe. On the bottom of the screen, underneath the tempo marker, you'll see your ammo count. Up until now, there hasn't really been a limit on how you destroy your opponent's statements. But for now on, just locking on and pressing the left mouse button won't be enough to handle them. Now it will cost you one bullet to destroy a single remark. Once you run out of bullets, you can't destroy any more statements, no matter how locked on you are. However, you can reload by pressing the tab key. Just like locking on, you have to press the tab key in time with the tempo marker. But basically, just remember that the tab key now has a function along with the right mouse button and the left mouse button. You'll automatically reload at the start at a fever time, and your ammo will not decrease. Oh, what is fever time again? Is that space? Oh, but if you're actually in difficulty, set the gentle, you won't have to reload at all. Wait, is, um... Oh god. It doesn't tell me. Alright, cool. You won't have to reload at all, but of course, I'm not set to the gentle, cause I like it kind. <laughs> in which case, you can ignore everything I just said. Well then, good luck and have fun. The moment of truth. You have it wrong! I cannot agree! You are a fool! So pathetic! Lies will get you nowhere! Do your worst! Away with you! You miserable wretch! I cannot agree! Oh my agree. god, this is so hard! You are a fool! Lies will get you nowhere! Do your worst, you miserable wretch! You have it wrong! I cannot agree! You are a fool! So pathetic! Lies will get you nowhere! Do your worst! Away with you! Wait! You miserable wretch. What is it to go into? I cannot agree! This should prove it! 
I'm like, what did I push? To? I don't think I was in fever time at all that time. I was if trying. If you're asking though. for proof that the dolly moved, I have it right here. When I found the dolly in the repository, one of the wheels had a blood stain on it. There was a pool of blood in the equipment room with a tire mark in it that matched the dolly wheel's tread. The killer probably rolled the dolly through the blood on accident as they wheeled the body out of the room. And as the blood dried on the tire, they moved the body into the repository. So there's my proof that the dolly was used to move Taka's body. I wasn't listening at all. <laughs> Does Les really hate me that well, much? Well, anyway, that was just something we had to get out of the way. Let's get back to the main subject. Yeah, the subject of how Robo Justice didn't do it. Because if it's not a killer robot, then what kind of robot is it? I'm not sure that really matters. Yeah. I'd be happy to explain <laughs> why the occupant of the suit couldn't possibly be the killer. If you look back on how the body was transported, it will become immediately obvious. Because you can't bend at the waist. If I look at how the body was moved, it'll be clear why the person in the suit couldn't have done it. What does he mean by that? That he couldn't bend. Robo Justice costume. As we know, Taka was killed in the equipment room, and from there, the body was moved to the room. Yeah, the culprit wrapped the body in the tub, then loaded it onto the dolly and wheeled it off, right? Oops. Uh, Shoot! Whatever, my bad. Okay. As we know, top and from there. Yeah, the cop then loaded it onto the now. Keep in mind that the dolly doesn't have a hand. Well, yeah. All you'd have to do is bend over. Okay. No, you can't bend over. You're absolutely right that you could push a dolly without a handle if you stoop down low. But if you were wearing that suit, do you think you could actually get into a position like that? What do you mean? Think back to what you said when we were all checking out the suit together. Remember? I'm blind as a bat in here. Can't see my feet at all. I'm surprised you got anywhere in this thing. I'm telling you, it wasn't me. And not to mention, you totally can't bend at the waist. Seems like a pretty obvious oversight. When you're in that suit, not only can you not see your feet, but you can't even bend at the waist. Am I right about that? Now that you mention it, yeah. It seems like it'd be awfully hard to push that dolly if you couldn't bend over. Well, what's to stop you from simply pushing the dolly with your feet? When you can't even see your feet? You really think someone could kick the dolly all that way? Yeah, it'd be totally impossible. Not that I can say for sure myself. On top of that, if you were wearing such a rigid, cumbersome suit, it's very unlikely you would have the dexterity to go about wrapping the body in a tarp. Well, I mean, isn't that just a matter of taking off the suit when you're ready to move the body? There's actually no chance that the, the costume was taken off this smooth body because you can't take it off by yourself. I got it! I don't think taking off the suit was an option. If you remember... I love this thing, but I can't get it off. A little help. Why would you make something that you can't take off by yourself? I didn't make this stupid freaking thing. There's a clasp on the back that's keeping you from, keeping, from getting it off. It looks pretty sturdy. I don't think you can get it off on your own. We don't really have a choice. Let's help you. And see. That's true. It seems impossible to put the suit on or take it off without help. Then, you really can't take it off by yourself? Hero wasn't just making it up? Of course I wasn't making it up. If he could have gotten it off by himself, I don't think he would have let us see him wearing it. Showing up in the suit was basically an invitation for everyone to suspect it. Yeah, that's right! So... It's really, really true that Robo Justice couldn't have moved. To be yes, clear, it's really, really true. Whoever did move the body, it couldn't have been Hero in the robot suit, correct? No, wait. Just a second, if you please. Have you forgotten about the picture that I took? The picture that I took when I was supposed to be unconscious. That picture? That picture? You all got a good look at it, did you not? The image of Hifumi being dragged away by Robo Justice? If whoever was in that suit is not the culprit, how do you explain that? Besides, do you remember what the now deceased Hifumi said? 
how did you get hurt? That guy hit me. What's that? Robo justice. Uh, that's what I decided to call him just now. So long as those facts exist, the proper conclusion is beyond question. The individual inside the suit and the culprit are one and the same. It was Hero, without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah, that's gotta be right. What? Why are you always lying? It's still far too early to reach that conclusion. Besides, there's no hurry to decide who did it before we rush to a verdict. Should instead of seizing on one viewpoint, the truth is uncovered by analyzing things from every angle. Perhaps, but where do we go from here? Let's review this series of unfortunate events from the beginning. <laughs> what a pain in the ass! I don't disagree, but our lives are on the line. If this is what it takes, we have to do it. Plus, maybe we'll get to find out where the heck Kyoko was when everything went down. All right then, let's take another look back at what happened. I suppose we could start with this morning. Four of us gathered together in the dining hall. We waited there for quite a while, but no bit that was around 8 a.m. And as soon as we... Soon after that, Hina found Celeste in the rec room. And it seems I was unconscious for about an hour after I was attacked by my mystery assailant. I know it was an hour because I remember being attacked a little after 7. That was when we saw Celeste's picture and discovered that her assailant had been wearing a strange costume. She was not As it down, turns can out, I please say it that also soon began. We were soon joined in our search by Byakuya and Toko, and then went on to find Hifumi in the library. He was injured, so we took him to the nurse's office, but not long after leaving the nurse's office. It's so shadow, something moving around the top of the stage. And when Celeste told like us that, that whatever, we decided to split <laughs> up and search the second floor. And soon after that, I saw someone moving around on the third floor. And I yelled out to everyone as soon as I did. Because I didn't remember your own story, right? That was a rather intense scream for someone like you. I saw him in these strange costume mans around the episode that claimed I was blocking the stairs so he had to further down the hall and disappeared. And then. Insane. Oh, start. Oh, yeah! Aww. What was that? But you can't come downstairs. Must have been helpful. Amazing. There's a lot This is bad. Come on, let's get back. At that point, we decided to divide up into two groups. Celeste, Hina, and I went back while Sakura, Byakuya, and Toko ch chased after the suspect that didn't exist. When we got back to the nurse's office, we found Hifumi. Dead. And that's when we heard the body discovery announcement. I left Celeste and Hina there and headed back to the third floor to let the others know what had happened. Meanwhile, we had just discovered Taka's body in the equipment room. We must have found both bodies at almost exactly the same time because we heard the same announcement not long after we discovered his body. And that's when I told you guys about Hifumi. Yeah, so one went off for both? But then another one went off when they were all in the room together, so obviously somebody wasn't dead yet. Then the three of us headed for the nurse's office, but right after we left, the three ran into Celeste who'd arrived after us, and she told us something very surprising. Ifumi's body has disappeared. Insane. We rushed back to the nurse's office and saw that she was right. Then we remembered we'd left Toko passed out in the equipment room, so we hurried back again. This can't be happening. Are we hallucinating all this or something? Insane. But when we got there, we discovered that now Taka's body had also gone missing. Next thing we knew, we were searching the school for two missing dead bodies. And after some time... Celeste informed us that she'd found the bodies, and we all headed to the repository, which is where we rediscovered the corpses. I think that about covers it. I see. The whole thing sounds exceptionally complicated. It certainly seems to me that these are not a simple series of connected events. Okay, well, if that's true, then what? Rather than a single series of events, I think we have to consider each murder a separate situation. And from there, we can uncover the contradictions surrounding all of them. Now then, let's get started, beginning with what happened to Taka. Contradictions hidden and what happened to Todd then. In order to uncover the truth of this case, I have to find them no matter what. Okay. 
make my argument. Monica moved file three. Shit, I didn't read that at all. <laughs> so, regarding Taka's death, I wonder if he died before Hifumi, or perhaps it was after. We already know what order they were killed in. Taka came last. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the Justice Hammers. It's right. true that Hifumi yeah. was killed with Justice Hammer 3, while Taka's death came from a swing of Justice Hammer 4. See? So it's obvious Taka came after. So, regard, I wonder if or perhaps it was- We already know what order they were killed. Taka came last. Oh, damn it. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the Justice Hammers. Okay, so I just ended up doing numbering. Shoot! So, regarding I wonder if he died or perhaps it was after, we already know what order they were killed in. What the hell? Shoot! So, regarding Taka's death, I wonder if he died before Hifumi, or perhaps it was after? We already know what order they were killed in. Taka came last. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the Justice Hammers. It's true that Hifumi was killed with Justice while Taka's death came from a swing. See? So it's obvious Taka came after. How do I change my bullet? Well, I can't do anything about So, that, regarding but... Taka's death. Hold on. Uh, turn on concentration by holding the space key, fast forward. When you spot some text may appear in yellow, so you spot. Find truth bullets, press the left mouse button to fire whatever truth bullet you loaded. Yeah. Press the Q key, the truth bullets will be automatically loaded according to the order. <sighs> Oh yeah. Okay, truth truth bullet flashback. Hmm. Like I it. wonder if he died before he boom. Or perhaps it was after. We already know what order they were killed in. Taka came last. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the justice. No, there we go. I knew that something to do with getting a different bullet. I just can't remember how to do it. Sorry, it took me a while, guys. There's no reason to assume that the hammers were used in the same order as their numbers. If anything, that's just another way the killer tried to disguise their actions. So you're saying the culprit wanted us to think the hammers were used in order, but in reality, Taka was killed before Hifumi? Okay then, let's see the proof. Um, evidence that proves Taka was killed before Hifumi. There's something that... Relates to what time he must have died. Oh yeah, his watch, his wristwatch. Meh, watch. No, Hangman's Gambit. I don't know how this one works. Oh my god. Wristwatch. Oh, that's it. Sorry. I have to go in order. I get them when they're red and turn them to red if they are not red. I get I it now. Learning stuff, guys. Watch. Learning. Look, it broke with the hands pointing just past six o'clock. It must have gotten broken when he was attacked by the killer, because as of last night. Hey, you! How long were you gonna keep us waiting? Doug's irritated voice. Blah blah blah. It's almost six o'clock. Blah blah blah. When everyone goes to bed. And see. So if it wasn't broken after six last night. Then he must have been attacked around 6 this morning. And that would be his official time of death. But if that's true, then he was killed well before Hifumi. Yeah. And before Celeste was attacked this morning, which happened around 7. That's right. 
Taka was killed before any of the other incidents took place. That simple fact slipped past all of us. We made the wrong assumption about the order of events, all because of those justice hammers. That's exactly why the culprit wrote the numbers on each hammer and had them increase in size. That way, when we saw how they were used in each incident, we'd easily make that wrong assumption. Now, if Taka was killed around six, then everyone's alibis for his murder go out the that, window. That is true. Because when he was killed, we hadn't met up in the dining hall yet. That may be true in the case of Taka's murder, but all of our alibis still hold true for Hifumi's death. That's right. With him, at least, we're all safe. Oh, yeah, uh huh. Hifumi scream. We'll have rock hard abs. Oh wait, that's just me. Since all of us were there together, clearly none of us could have killed him. And it does not stop there. There was also the moment when we discovered his body had disappeared. When his body vanished from the nurse's office, Hina and I were in the bathroom together, while everyone else was in the equipment room, correct? And then there's the disappearance of Taka's body from the equipment room. At that time, we were all gathered together in the nurse's office because of Hifumi going missing. Yeah, so... Well, don't forget, I was passed out in the equipment room the whole time! Wait, then what if Genocide Jill did it? She could have dragged Taka's body out of there right then! Even if she could pull that off, there's no way she could have done the same with Hifumi's body. Because, as we just established, she was passed out in the equipment room when his body disappeared. Besides, I didn't do either of them anyway. In other words, it is impossible that any of us could have killed Hifumi or moved either of their bodies. On the other hand, Hiro and Kyoko had disappeared, so they most Kyoko. certainly could have done those things. Hmm. For now, we can't get fixated on who did it, or we'll just keep going around in circles. So instead of who, I propose we start talking about how. In particular, I think we need to figure out how Hifumi's body got moved. Yeah. That's true. We searched everywhere, but we couldn't figure out how to explain his body disappearing. And according to what Celeste's... We could not have been more... We have not been gone for more than a few minutes, so, so then the killer was... His body apparently disappeared in the one minute her and Hina took their eyes I'm off I'm assuming him. he was still alive. But to carry that much weight from the first floor up to... Oh, oh man, yeah! Wow. Well, what if I told you there was a way to make the impossible possible? What? How? If the dead body were to move itself. Thank you. The, the dead body m moved on its own? <laughs> no! I don't think it has anything to do with the occult. I think what she's implying is we thought Hifumi was dead, but perhaps in reality he was still alive. He was alive? Are you saying Hifumi wasn't carried out of the nurse's office, but simply walked out on his own? Yes! But I mean, we found his body. He was dead! Was he though? Perhaps he was simply playing dead. That... it isn't possible. The idea that Hifumi was still alive, is it really possible? Yes, it is! It's fucking possible when it happened, okay? Make my argument. Broken wristwatch. Oh, that to do with anything. Are you saying that when we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office, there's a chance he was actually still alive? No. It is impossible. Hifumi was dead, without a doubt. And you know that how? Surely you heard the body discovery announcement along with the rest of us. Hifumi's dead body had been found. And that is why the announcement was made. Are we really so sure of maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's discovery? I'm sure the 
Vargas Grim House was only made once, but Fumi and Tazu's bodies were discovered almost at exactly the same time. Are you saying that when we first found you, Fumi, there's a chance he was actually still alive? No. It is yeah. impossible. Hifumi was dead, and you know that shortly you heard the body discovery. Hifumi's dead body had been found, and that is why the announcement was made. Are we really so sure about that? Maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's discovery. Yep. Um, maybe that's Shoot. the one I need? The most at the very end. Oh, I died. <laughs> class already. I know this wristwatch has nothing to do with this. Are you saying that when we first found there's a chance he was actually still alive? No. It is impossible. Hifumi was dead. Without a doubt. And you know that half shortly you heard the body discovery announcement, along with the rest of us, Hifumi's dead body had been found. Ah! Shoot! Are you saying that when we first found Hifu, there's a chance he was actually still alive? No. If Hifumi was dead, and you know that shortly you heard the body that Hifumi's dead body had, and that is why the announcement was made. Are we really so sure about that? Maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's I don't get her! Ah! Are you saying that when we first found there's a chance he was actually still alive? No. It is empty for me was dead. Without a doubt. And you know that how? Surely you heard the body discovery announcement along with the wreck Hifumi's dead body had been found. And that is why the announcement was made. Are we really so sure? Maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's discovery. Saying that when we first found Hifumi in the nurse's office, there's a chance he was actually still alive. Uh. Shoot! Are you saying that when we first found there's a chance he was actually still alive? No. It is impossible. Hifumi was dead, and you know that shortly you heard the body discovery Hifumi's dead body had been found. And that is why the announcement was made. Are we really so sure? Maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's discovery. Oh no! Shoot! Are you saying that when we first there's a chance you- No. Hifumi was dead, and you know that shortly you heard the body that Hifumi is dead, and that is- what Are we really so sure about that? Maybe the announcement was intended to signal someone else's discovery. Saying that when we first found Hifu, there's a chance he was actually still alive. No. It is in Hifumi was dead. Without a doubt. And you know that how? Surely you heard the body discovery announcement of Hifumi's dead body had been found. Oh, finally. No, it's Sorry, I'm bad at this, guys. Fuck. Was the body discovery announcement that was made really intended for Hifumi? Of course it was. The announcement played right. Maybe. But that was also the same time that Taka's body was found. That's right. It wasn't long after finding his body that we heard the announcement. So there's a good chance we've made a mistake in there somewhere. I think we've confused whether the announcement was for Hifumi or Taka. First of all, if two bodies had been found, there really should have been two announcements. Maybe Monokuma simply got lazy and rolled them together into one. What do you say, Monokuma? Any comment? Well, it's a very sensitive issue, so I can't go into too much detail. But what I can say about the body discovery announcement is that it's only broadcast when three or more people find a dead body for the first time. That didn't answer our question, man. We're asking if you're a lazy bum. No, actually, that was plenty. Huh? He said it's only broadcast when a body is discovered for the first time. Which means, even if we find the same body again later, he won't make the announcement again. If that's true, then why was the announcement made again later on? Huh? Later on? Exactly. We heard the body discovery announcement twice. The second the body discovery announcement. The first time we played is when we found each body in the nurse's office and the equipment room. 
The second time was when both buddies were rediscovered. I got it. We heard it a second time in the repository when we rediscovered the two bodies. Ding dong, ding dong. It didn't seem weird at the time. But it contradicts what Monokuma just told us, doesn't it? Exactly. If we were actually rediscovering both bodies, the announcement shouldn't have played. And in reality, when the two dead bodies were rediscovered, one of them was actually being discovered for the first time. Yeah. So when we found Hifumi the first time in the nurse's office, he wasn't actually dead yet. Meaning, he wasn't actually found dead until we came upon him in the repository. And that's just part of it. There's one other thing that leads me to believe he was still alive in the nurse's office. Oh, 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 I know, I know! Because he was super good at playing dead! But a big bit of move! That is the worst logic I have ever heard. But honestly, I do not think there's anything that can prove he was still alive. Okay, the then. Fact that he was Let's sweating. take another look at the events surrounding the discovery of his body. Then it should become clear whether he was really alive or not. This whole thing is pointless. Now if we prove that shows if he was still alive, I have to find out if shows everyone. Hmm. Make my argument. If it means glasses. Okay. Well, here's one thing we do know. The first time we found his knees and then, the man his body disappeared. And the next time we saw his body, it was in the repository. But when you compare his body before being moved and his body after being moved, other than the change in how it was positioned, there was no notable difference. Yes, there was. No, In fact, there was one clear difference between Hifumi and the nurse's office and the repository, his glasses. That fact alone proves that he was only playing dead in the beginning. Perhaps you'd like to fill the rest of us in? When we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, his glasses were covered with blood. But when we found him again later in the repository, they were spotless. And... I found the item he used to wipe them clean in the nurse's office trash can. There is a found trash can in the nurse's office was. I got it! I was literally just looking for the picture. It picture's. was a glasses cleaning block read. featuring <laughs> a certain cartoon mascot. One look at the blood stain on the cloth should make things clear. This piece of cloth was used to wipe Hifumi's glasses, and the mascot on the cloth is the same one that's on the digital camera, right? And whose digital camera was it? Hifumi's, of course. The character was... Princess Piggles. From Demon Angel Pretty Pudgy Princess, I think. I highly doubt anyone but Hifumi would have brought something like this to school. I see your point. And the only people here who wear glasses are... I wouldn't be caught dead using a tacky piece of garbage like that. A few tissues is all I need to keep my glasses clean. Then there's no question. It belongs to Hifumi. Mmm. Mmm. So what you're saying is... What exactly? What I'm saying is... The blood on his glasses was wiped away using his own glasses cleaning. Even if that is true. It does not mean he wiped the blood off himself. But who would benefit from a clean pair of glasses other than the glasses owner? That's a good point. And it must have been him, right? So let's assume that Hifumi was still alive in the nurse's office. He pretends to be dead. Then when he's alone, he wipes his glasses clean so he can see. Then he stands up and walks out on his own two feet. And with that, the impossible task of moving his copious corpse becomes possible, wouldn't you say? But then, if he was just pretending to be dead, what was with all that blood? Was it paint or something? No. The fridge in the nurse's office contains packs of blood yeah. for emergencies. He probably used one of those. He figured if he was gonna play dead, he should go all out. So he just dumped it everywhere! But he got crazy with it and had to wipe his glasses off when he was done. Oh, what an idiot! 
and if Hifumi was still alive at that point, the disappearance of Taka's body is easily explained. It should be perfectly obvious who must have moved Taka's corpse. The one who moved Taka's body was Saki, Hifumi, or Taka himself? I got it! It could only have been Hifumi. Why would he move it, though? While we were all gathered in the nurse's office, he went to the equipment room and took Taka's body. That also explains how the door to the repository got locked. The door was locked? Well, after the bodies oh, disappeared, y'all weren't looking for them, right? So me and Sakura headed for the repository. But when we got there, the door was locked. And the repository door can only be locked from the inside. Which means when Hina and Sakura got to the repository, someone was already inside. I'm so confused right now. And it could only have been Hifumi who just finished stashing Taka's body there. He convinced us all he was dead, and when he saw his chance, he dragged Taka's body to the repository. Then how did he get killed, and why was he taken, being taken by Rare Witch? So, Hifumi wasn't just another victim in this case. He was one of the assailants. But that means he took part in the murders. I just can't believe it. If you're having trouble, would you like me to show you one more piece of evidence? There's more? Oh, absolutely. The single biggest fact pointing to his involvement has yet to be revealed. You know what I'm talking about, right, Makoto? The item he took off of Taka's lifeless body? Oh, yeah. I got it! You're talking about the note Hifumi had hidden away, aren't you? That's right. We found it stuffed in his pants. What? In his pants? <laughs> yes, his pants. Okay, well, forget about the pants for now. Take a look at what the note says. I don't know, I'm not looking at you. Escape, my diploma can't find out, so I'll tell anyone else for now. Let's meet the equipment room at 6 a.m. That's the note I was telling you about. The one that told me where to go. Huh? Wait, this one's a little different. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. I see. Then this note isn't the same one Hiro got. It's not the same? In other words, the killer got in touch with another person, and that person could only have been... I got it! That's right! Taka! The killer used this note to draw out Taka and murder him. Hello! Over here! Objection! Objection! Going on, but Hifumi had that letter, right? So whoever wrote it wasn't drawing out TikTok, they were drawing out Huffy! Um, just yeah. to be clear, TikTok. Oh, yes. yes! Why must you ruin it every time? You can't let her get to me. Wait, how do I start fever time? Oh, okay, I thought it was gonna be one of those things. Burger oh god, how do I go through these? I need any of these. But... Puffy had the note, right? Wait. Then the person I... it was intended for must have been Huffy! But remember what the note said. What time did it say to meet? Six a.m. I'm not so through Oh, shit. The time doesn't matter! The note has nothing to do with TikTok! I know it's 6 a.m. I'll have it at 6 a.m. That's what I need to clear up. Puppy had the note, right? And the person it was intended for must have been Hoppy! But remember what the note said. What time did it say to meet? 6 a.m., I believe. The time doesn't matter! The note has nothing to do with TikTok! I don't know, I'm so confused. Shoot. Puppy had the note, right? Oh, then the person it was intended for must have been Hoppy. But remember what the note said. What time did it say to me? 6 a.m. The time doesn't matter. The note has nothing to do with TikTok! 
Good. The thing I was looking for was Q. I'm like, I don't know how no. to cycle There absolutely these. is a connection. What? what the hell are you talking about? That's why his other trials are so spaced apart. Like, I don't remember anything when I get to the next trial. The note said to meet at 6 a.m., which is the same time Taka was murdered. You've already proven that using his wristwatch. But there's more. Look where the note says to meet. The equipment room. Which is where Taka was killed. I see. So, Taka was murdered at both the time and place written in the note. I think that should be plenty to show that this note was definitely meant for Taka. Hmm. Hmm. Well, did you put it like that? No further objections! <laughs> then someone used that note to trick Taka. Just the same as me. <sighs> the culprit really is a cold-blooded monster. Telling people they found a way out. But if they gave the note to Taka, what was Hifumi doing with it? Stuffed down his pants, no less! Most likely. Hifumi stole it off Taka's corpse after he died. Huh? He stole it? Where's your proof? Go ahead, show us. Proof that Hifumi stole the note from Taka. I got it! When I searched Taka's body, I saw that his lifeless hand was gripping a small scrap of paper. If I'm right about this, the sheet of paper, this piece of paper, I knew it! It fits perfectly with the note we found hidden on Hifumi! Then Taka's scrap and Hifumi's note... Yup, they're from the same piece of paper. Hifumi had the note meant for Taka, while Taka's corpse still grasped a small piece of that note. Whoa! There's only one way to explain it. Taka died clutching the note. Hifumi tried to free the note from its death grip, leaving behind only one small scrap. Did I get all that right? That means Hifumi yeah, knew the note was important. Exactly. Which proves that he was an accomplice in the murder. Whoa, yeah. After seeing all this, Hifumi was super involved in this whole thing for sure. He's an accomplice. In fact... Oh. He'd do anything Silas told him to do. He was behind the whole thing. In fact... He's still alive! Sorry, no. Yeah, he's not alive anymore. <laughs> when we found him in the repository, Hifumi was truly and completely dead. The second body discovery announcement. Yeah. So then... Whoever did is the mastermind. The true killer. He was killed in the repository. So he must have been killed not long after transporting Taka's body. So, he must have been killed after Taka's body vanished, but before we found both bodies in the repository. During that time, we'd all split up and were searching for Taka's missing body. In other words, during that time, none of us have alibis. Wait, but me and Sakura were together. Stop trying to steal the spotlight, you stupid walrus! <laughs> Who are you calling a walrus? Anyway, when they were killed bothers me too. But there's something that's been bothering me even more. And what might that be? The weapon they used to kill Hifumi. The weapon? Yeah. Because, I mean, according to the Monokuma file, the way Taka and Hifumi were killed was almost the same, with them having similar fractures and all. But Justice Hammer 3 and 4 were still laying around in the nurse's office and equipment room, right? So if Hifumi was killed in the repository, the culprit would have had to grab one of the hammers, kill Hifumi, then put the hammer back where they found it. But wouldn't that be seriously risky for him? I'm surprised. It seems there's some semblance of a brain knocking around that skull of yours after all. Thanks, Buck. Yeah. Hell yeah! It's packed in there good and tight. <laughs> He's right, though. I don't understand it either. The Monokuma file makes it clear that they were killed using similar instruments. But if the hammers were already laying around those other rooms... So the question is, how could the culprit have gotten their hands on either of the hammers? Personally, I haven't a clue. So which hammer was used to attack Celeste? Number one or number two? Those were accounted for in other rooms too. And I don't think either one is big enough to kill someone. Um... Then, uh... Is it not possible they used a different weapon? I don't think it is possible. They were both killed with the same kind of thing, right? So then, what was used to kill Hifumi? Uh... Weapon that was actually used to kill Hifumi... 
the whole picture surrounding this case won't become clear until I figure that out. So I'm gonna have to find the truth. Oh god. There's so many like little puzzles in this one. Yeah, the spot was hammered, bitch. What was used to kill Hifumi? Was it Justice Hammer 3? Maybe Justice Hammer 4? Well, whatever there's one thing we have to the culprit able to move or how did nobody witness them carrying it? Sounds like a Justice Hammer 5 is about to make its appearance! Shoot! Sorry, no, sorry. What oh. was used to kill Hifumi? I didn't mean to do that! God damn it, I'm trying to scroll through Shoot. this. I'm mad. I'm gonna die again. What was used to was it just maybe justice? Yeah. There's one how was the culprit? How did nobody Sounds yeah, like a Justice Hammer 5? Check out murdergear.com slash hammer time for more info! Well, one thing seems pretty clear. The murder weapon had to be one of the Justice Hammers. There we go. No, it's wrong. It was a blubbed up. The murder weapon wasn't a justice hammer at all. But, seriously? Specifically, a hammer from the repository. Now, all the hammers in the repository were covered in flecks of grit and debris. But for some reason, one of them had been scrubbed clean. Huh? And the reason it had been scrubbed clean was most likely because it was used to commit murder. If the hammer got covered in Hifumi's blood, of course they'd have to clean it off. I'd also like to point out that the repository has all kinds of hammers. Big ones, small ones, some as big as your head, and even some flat mallet-like ones. I think whoever made the justice hammers used those as a basis for their design. If that's true, that would explain the Monokuma files note about the wounds being similar. So Hifumi moved Taka's body to the repository where someone then used a hammer to kill him. And whoever did that is the true killer. The one who Fumi was working with. And the one who betrayed him. Hold on a moment. I still think it's strange to assume someone was working together with him. The way the graduation rule works, there is no benefit to helping someone else carry out a murder. So the idea that anyone would work together like that is simply ludicrous. We talked about this, did we not? We did talk about how there wouldn't be any reason for anyone to work together, at least. That's what we thought at first, but... Don't work now, I'll make my argument. The spotless hammer again? Obviously not. Based on the rules that have been laid out for us, even if more than one person is complicit in the murder, only the one who actually carried out the act can graduate and survive. Assuming the rule holds true, it is simply impossible that two people work together. That is how the rule was explained to us. But that only really applies if there's one murder, right? In this case, however, there were two murders. I think there was no chance to do work together on this. Based on the rules that have been let out, even if more than one person, only the one who actually carried out the act can graduate, assuming the rule holds true. It is I don't know no, why it's possible that such two murders happen, but uh, apparently that's the right thing. Let's figure out why. Since there were two murders, it's at least plausible that more than one person was involved. Oh, okay, that's why. What do you mean? If there'd only been one murder, then yes, the idea of an accomplice isn't really worth considering. Naturally, if only one person can be saved per murder, an accomplice has no risk versus reward benefit. Risk versus reward benefit? The payoff for working together. The reward gamble, you is say? the risk of taking part in a scheme. There's no point in being someone's accomplice if there's no benefit to you. However, if there were some potential mutual reward for the risk, then cooperation becomes possible. You're saying that two people could act as each other's accomplices to commit two separate murders. I think that's what the true killer told Hifumi. They would each have an accomplice for their crime. And based on the case's events, Hifumi would have been the first one to act, murdering Taka. They made him carry out the first murder so he couldn't back out of helping them later on. So in this case, there wasn't one single person committing multiple murders. Instead, each person killed someone. 
creating two separate incidents. And it only looked like one person because that's how the true killer designed it to look. Damn. A single suspicious individual, a similar weapon used in each crime, by creating one seamless set of circumstances, they made it look like one person was behind it all. The mastermind picked their target and managed to convince him to go along with their plan. Select. And then to avoid the no accomplices rule, they simply killed their accomplice. Which, if true, means that betraying Hifumi was part of the plan from the very beginning. That, that's just awful. How could anyone be so cruel? You think so? I can't help but admire its cunning. Still, their choice of accomplice seems... Oh. The effort made to convince us the two murders were the same. That was the main characteristic this time. Yoko must have noticed that fact from the very beginning, which is why she said not to look at this as a series of connected events, but entirely separate incidents. Yoko really is amazing. Although, when you think about it, she's almost too amazing. Like, it's almost unnatural to get you. I understand how an accomplice could be involved, but then who was the one pulling Hifumi's string? That's problem number one Uno right now! The true killer manipulated Fumi to carry out a number of actions, and in the end, murdered him. In the debates up till now, the way the case has unfolded, when you consider all that, there's really only one person who seems to fit. Oh, I can find... fix someone? Here's my answer! Got it! It was Celeste. Ah, uh, so I'm the suspicious individual now, am I? <laughs> I really do hate this kind of joke. A joke? I wonder. So what you are saying, then, is that I specifically chose to work together with Hifumi. The idea that I would choose to spend any amount of time interacting with him, that I would go within ten feet of that shit from brain, that lazy, worthless, goddamn idiot! Oh, you're losing your accent. Uh, 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 pardonnez-moi. Just to be clear, there is evidence to support it. Is that so? It is. Throughout the investigation, there was certain behavior that was common only to the two of you. Considering what we've learned so far, it only further proves that the two of you were working together. What is that? Only if Fumi's left hiding Tommy. Some kind of doing suspicion in the paper hidden from his pants to screaming. Oh, they did a lot of screaming. I don't think that's it. Oh. Shoot! Crap! I got it! Oh, damn it! <laughs> the behavior they had in common has to do with the suspicious individual <laughs> in the suit. That's so dumb. Doesn't it? The only ones who ever actually saw Robo Justice firsthand were Celeste and he fooled. Shush. The adults are talking now. Okay, Biakia, thanks. Sorry. As he said, only Celeste and Hifumi ever laid eyes on the costumed individual. If we accept that Hifumi was one of the culprits, we can't help but suspect what Celeste has said as well. Are you saying everything they told us was a lie? Yup. After taking Hifumi to the nurse's office, we all began our search for this individual, correct? And not too long after that, do you remember what Celeste said? We headed to the second floor specifically because of what she claimed to have seen. Next, to draw us all to the physics lab up on the third floor, she let out a blood-curdling scream. And when we'd all come to see what was wrong, what was it she said? Once she'd done her job of getting us all up to the physics lab, it was time for her partner to get to work. It was to get us to divide into two groups, so that we would discover both bodies at the same time? In fact, Celeste was precisely the one who proposed that we split up. Then why don't we split into two groups? Very well, the Mikko and Vina, you come with me. Well, if Celeste and Hifumi were working together, all those chance events suddenly become connected. 
And on top of that, that piercing cry of yours early on. <laughs> that was to signal Hifumi, wasn't it? It was your way of telling him, we are on the third floor. Everything's going according to plan. Why else would you let out a scream that could have carried across the sea? I just realized another strange thing. When we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, who we now know was only pretending to be dead. Celeste. You were the first one to say he'd been murdered. You wanted to make sure we wouldn't have any doubt in our minds. I... I don't believe it! Everything... the whole thing was one big act! Hina, you were with Celeste when Hifumi's body disappeared, right? Yeah. I was feeling kind of sick, so Celeste took me to the bathroom. Wait! Then that was... She wasn't worried about you. No. She just saw a chance to help Hifumi sneak out of the nurse's office. So I mean like really quiet. There's not much to like talk about when all this is going on. It's just them talking and yeah. Not much to comment on. Each piece isn't much by itself, but start putting them together and the picture gets very ugly indeed. Wouldn't you agree, Celeste? I have no idea what you mean. Don't bother trying to deny it. You made one fatal mistake. Oh, did I? I didn't even catch it myself when you first said it, but looking back, I can say that that one little slip-up was your undoing. I'm talking about what you said after Hifumi's body disappeared and we returned to the nurse's office. Seriously, it's not like an evidence walks away. I must really be enjoying this, enjoying the sight of us standing around, frightening of these. We're all going to die here. We're going to die just like those guys died. I remember her saying that too, but... I don't understand what's so strange about it. Then pay attention. Sakura, Toko, and I were first to discover Taka's body in the equipment room. Then Makoto showed up and told us Hifumi had been killed. So Sakura and I left with Makoto. Once we were in the hall, we ran into Celeste, and the four of us headed to the nurse's office. Now, the entire time we were together, none of us said anything about Taka being dead. Oh. Think about it. Celeste's comment doesn't make sense. It was completely out of place. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. Although I don't really get what it is. You hear that, Celeste? Everyone's having some trouble understanding. Can you, Could you repeat, repeat what you, what you said? said? If you're really not the culprit, you shouldn't have any problem repeating it, right? Now, here's that Celeste's comment doesn't make sense, but what is he alluding to? All I said was, they must really be enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around, frightened and confused. They must be positively elated. We are all going to die here. We are going to die, just like those guys died. And that is all I said. And that's all it takes to finish this. It's obvious, isn't it? What was so strange about Celeste's comment? Oh shit. Shoot! You know my last part, guys. Those guys. I need to get to All I said, they must really enjoy the sight of us. They must be. We are all going to die here. We are going to die. Just like those guys died. And that is all. And that's all it takes. What was so strange about Celeste's comment? Why so strange? All I said was, they must really be enjoy enjoying the sight of us standing around, frightened and confused. They must be positively elated. We are all going to die here. We are going to die, just like those guys. And that is all I said. And I think that's that all it takes to finish this. It's off what was so strange about Celeste's comment. All I said was they must really enjoy the sight of us. They must be. We are all going to die. We are going to die, just like. Yeah. No. That was so strange. Okay. I taken the wrong bullet. No. That's right. There's no reason Celeste should have said 
just like those guys died. When she said that, none of us had told her Taka was dead. Exactly. And we didn't run into her until after we were all out in the hall. So there was never any chance for her to have seen his body in the equipment room for herself. So how did you know, Celeste? How did you know more than one person had been killed? And how did you know they were both guys? Because Kyoko had also disappeared, right? So she could have been dead too. <laughs> you all have such vivid imaginations. You know that? Imaginations? You claim that I was lying when I told you about the suspicious person I saw. Then what about the picture I took? How do you explain this picture of the costumed villain dragging Hifumi away? It, it has to be some kind of setup, right? So let's put the suit on. And then... Then she used the camera's timer to tell you something. Have forgotten? You are the only one who could have possibly fit into that suit. Plus, I happen to know that this particular camera does not have a timer. In other words, it is an unassailable fact that this is a picture of Hifumi being dragged away if everything I told you was a lie. Simple. Are we sure that's really a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away? What could you possibly mean by that? Surely there are other explanations than the one you've offered up. No. There is no, no. other explanation. Other explanations? You know that Hifumi's holding it up? Huh? <laughs> it wasn't a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away. The only possibility is Hifumi uh, and the suspect have been drinking Hifumi and the suspect have been dancing. Is dragging the suspect away. I got it! It's not a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away. I would say it's a picture of Hifumi dragging the suspect away. That's certainly within the realm of possibility. The one being dragged off in that picture isn't Hifumi, but the person in the robot suit. We've simply been led to believe that it's the other way around. And the strange costume might only exist to lead us astray even farther. If you saw someone wearing something like that in this situation, of course you'd notice and be suspicious. That's what happened! You put me to sleep and made me out to be the bad guy in all this! <laughs> <laughs> Such a thing is utterly impossible. Hifumi was dragging him away? Ridiculous, is it? I don't think it's ridiculous at all. Then shut your mouth and allow me to educate you. Ooh, someone's getting ballsy. Less thing she can prove that there's no way of whom is dragging the suspect away. So is that really possible? Make my argument. Robo justice, you a robo justice food friend. Okay. Who dressed me up in that suit after I passed out? Then you just draped me across Hifumi and had him carry my weight. You tried to make me look like the bad guy. Like I said, ridiculous. As you can see in the picture, the suspect is standing perfectly upright. If the person inside the suit was unconscious, there's no way they could stand up straight like that. Then the fortune-telling idiot is the culprit after all! Get away! Oh. Yes, I just said, can't bend at the waist, so yeah, that's why they're... You dressed me up in that suit after I passed out! Then you just drink me across with you tried to make me look... Like I said, as you can see in the picture, the suspect is standing perfectly upright. If the person inside the suit was unconscious... Oh, yeah. oh, damn it. Shoot! You dressed me up in that suit after I- Then you just drink it. You tried to make me look- Like I said, as you can see in the picture, if the person inside the suit was a- There's no way they could stand up straight- No, it's wrong. That's what I wanted to do. I flubbed up a lot. During this class drive, no. oh my god. Even if the person inside the suit were unconscious, they could still stand up like that. Because that robo-justice suit had a certain characteristic. You can't bend that the way. That's right! They totally made a mistake when they made it, so it couldn't bend at the waist. I'm not so sure that was a mistake. I think the suit was designed from the beginning to be used the way it was. 
Celeste and Hikumi took the suit they'd specially designed and stuffed Hiro into it. That's how they were able to fake that whole thing. The point of it all was to make us believe whoever was in the suit was to blink. <laughs> Damn that noise. Well though. then, I suppose this is checkmate. Checkmate? Her face. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me laugh, you idiot! What do you mean, checkmate? Celeste? Clearly! You wanna cram me into your little guilty box? Well, here's one little problem. Have you already forgotten what Hifumi told us as he lay dying? She <laughs> goes in and out of her accent, like I do. I tried to kill you, but it was a kill me. That's right, the brother named Yasuhiro. When we asked him who had attacked him, his answer was quite clear, was it not? He said, and I quote, Yasuhiro. In other words, Yasuhiro Hakakurei! Right, but my name isn't really Yasuhiro. It's actually Taro. Your confusing statements don't make any sense. You're only making things more complicated. He did say Yasuhiro, but are we sure he was really pointing the finger at Hiro? What the hell are you talking about? I'll burn you alive! Kyoko, uh. what do you mean by that? Think back to how Hifumi used to talk to us. How did he refer to each of us? Uh. I got it! That's right! Our last names! He called us all by our last names! Exactly. I know I heard him say oh, yeah. Mr. Nayagi more than once, for example. So if Hifumi did mean to say Hiro's name, he would have said his last name, Hagakure. I'm sure it was just incidental. By chance, he just... his first name. Indecent? Don't talk. Yeah. Random chance. Now isn't that a convenient explanation? No. There's no reason to think he would have said the name any different than normal. But he must have run out of energy before he could say any more. So Hifumi was trying to tell us the last name of whoever killed him? But the name he said doesn't apply to anyone here. Well, no. Hold on. There's one person it could apply to. And that's Celeste. She never actually told us what her real name is. Yeah. <laughs> What did you just oh say? Oh my god, Am I, I'm so right, guys. I you love think being right. You'd take your false accusation so far, I don't know whether to laugh or spit. Come on, enough with your idiotic blather. Yasuhiro is a loser's name. Do I look like a loser to you? Well, do I? Oh, you look really angry. Yet. I think I've earned the right to be a little on edge. Okay, then fill us in. What's your real name? Make sure your ear holes are wide open and listen up! My real name is Celestia Ludenberg. Could you please stop making me repeat myself over and over again? I still won't give up, so then. I have to do something to make her accept it. What are we gonna do? No, <laughs> I. Oh, her e-handbook. Hifumi was trying to tell us something. He wanted us to know the killer's last name. Yasuhiro. Oh. If there's one person here who might have that... It would have to be you, Celeste. You haven't told anyone... How many times do I have to tell my name? Celeste, you loaded from... Why is it upside down? How long do you plan to go on pretending? I'm not pretending. It's the truth. And since you have no way to contradict me. No, it's wrong. There we go. Good thing I missed that first time, or else I would have had to suck a dick. That's it. The handbook. What? Anytime you turn your handbook on, it shows the owner's name when it boots up, right? Monokuma told us all about it before. It's absolutely vital to a healthy school life, so don't lose it. When you start it up, we'll display your name. Always make sure you have the right one. Now, this is not your everyday notebook. It has so many more uses than that. So all we have to do is check our handbook, and that'll clear up everything. That's how we can find out Celeste's real name. That's an invasion of privacy. I, I refuse to 
cooperate. And why would you refuse? It would clear your name. Celeste, can you please just tell us what really happened? Please, just tell us. Even when I'm put in check, it's just my nature not to give up. Because, 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 Until the game's over, you never know what might happen. Fine then. Let me settle. Uh. Let me go over the case again, from the beginning, and shed light on all your crimes. And that'll bring everything to an end. Oh, yeah, you have to put together the notebook thing. Act one. Fumi and what? The killer is you! Before anything, the killer persuaded me. He fooled me with an accomplice. The killer was able to execute a number of otherwise impossible schemes. Convince someone to meet them in the rec room last night at one in the morning. That someone they met with was Hero, the murderous duo intended to pass Hero off as the prime suspect. So when they met up with him, they drugged him, knocked him out, and stuffed him into the Robo Justice suit. Next, Fumi positioned himself to make it look like Robo Justice was attacking him, while the killer used a digital camera to take pictures of the assault. They did all this just to create evidence that would put the suspicion on Hero. When they were done with him, they shoved him, still unconscious, into the pool room locker. And then finally, at 6 a.m., they moved into the murder phase of their plan. They called Taka to the equipment room. And that's where Hifumi killed him, making it the scene of the first murder. The murder weapon was Justice Hammer 4, which was left there in the equipment room. The reason Hammer Number 4 was used was to create confusion about the order of the crimes. So, next they falsified two more assault incidents. For these attacks, the killers pretended to be the victims to solidify Robo Justice as the suspect. The first fake incident was the attack in the rec room. There, the killers wanted us to see Justice Hammer 1 and the Robo Justice pictures they'd taken. They wanted to make sure we bought the surprise attack. The second fake incident was the attack and this time, they planted Justice Hammer 2 and an injured Hifumi to sell us that story. With these two incidents, the killers were able to create a certain preconception in our mind that the suspect was increasing the size of the hammers and attacking people in order as they did. We fell right into their trap and started looking for the suspect based on that. But... While we did that, we left Hifumi alone in the nurse's office. This was exactly what Hifumi was hoping for. took a blood packet from the refrigerator and Justice Hammer 3 and turned the room into a crime scene in which he himself had apparently been brutally murdered. He let out a scream to draw us back and when we returned, that's what we found. Meanwhile, the other group that had been out searching found Taka's body at the same time. So when we heard the body discovery announcement, we naturally assumed it was for Hifumi. We left the nurse's office, and Hifumi once again took advantage of the situation. He simply got up and made his escape. When we learned his body had disappeared, we all rushed back to the nurse's office, and once again, Hifumi had the chance he was waiting for. This time, he snuck into the equipment room. He wrapped Taka's body in a tarp 
and use the dolly to move it all the way down to the repository. That explains how each of the bodies disappeared. But why move it? But even Hifumi didn't know what the true killer had in mind for their final act. Their plan all along was to kill Hifumi and get rid of the one person who could betray them. And they did it using an ordinary, everyday hammer from the repository. That should cover everything that happened in this case. Killer? <laughs> Listen to you, trying to take charge, as if you're my private instructor. I, Celestia Ludenberg. Actually, no, Taiko Yasuhiro is fine. Taiko Yasuhiro. Taiko? So, you finally accepted it. I'm the kind of person, once I've lost, I don't like things to drag on. Interesting. Taiko. Oh my god, I failed so many times. We got an A though. 96 points. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, 96 medals. I got a thousand points. Okay, Monokuma. I'm ready to begin. Or, no, I suppose this is the end, isn't it? Hmm. It is indeed the moment we've all been waiting for. Time to vote. If you would, please locate your lever. And when the votes are tallied, will you make the right choice or the dri- Vote, da -da. We all vote for Monokuma. <laughs> a formality at this point, but once again, you're totally correct. The black in this time, the true killer we devised the whole stinking scheme was Celestia Ludenberg, or more precisely, Taiko Yasuhiro. Honestly, I lost. Well, that sucks. I mean, I guess I should, I can drop the accent. I guess trying to work with someone else was a mistake after all. The Fumi's ineptitude was beyond all my calculations. I knew it. So you really did approach for me with this plan. But how did you get him to agree? I can't imagine he would have happily agreed to commit murder. Hmm. I'm sure she relied on her specialty. Lying. <laughs> My specialty? Don't make me laugh. I didn't have to lie to get him to agree. So then. Then did you use you know? <sighs> I knew you'd figure it out, Kyoko. You're absolutely right. To get for me to act as my accomplice. <laughs> I used her. For everyone who's still left, I'll avoid mentioning it by name, but it was the one thing that Fumi and Taka are both super into. Does she mean she's talking about Alter Ego? Say what? What? What, what, what? What are you talking about? Just a second. I want to know! Don't interrupt. We're in the middle of a very important conversation here. <laughs> I'm totally out of the loop as usual. How sad. In other words... Then you're the one that stole it. Indeed. That's correct. I see. And you use it to drag a Fumi into the plan you'd come up with? <laughs> right again. Last night, after we had our meeting about how it had disappeared, I paid Fumi a little visit. Um, uh, uh, what are you doing here? Actually... I was hoping I could talk to you alone, yeah. It was about what was stolen. I know who did it. What? What? Are you okay with this? It was Taka. He stole it. <laughs> what? Oh shit, that's Monokuma. What? <laughs> so then... And I have proof. Would you like to see it? As it turned out, I'd 
So as it turned out, I'd found a use for the digital camera. I think you know what to, what to, uh, you know what to talk as from earlier and took pictures of it there. I deleted the pictures as soon as I showed to her form of call. Damnation! Ugh, so it was him. But how did he do it? She was supposed to yell, but I didn't even get close to her. <sighs> You're correct. Which is why talk of course we just steal. Say what? What? As for me. But please forgive me. He, he threatened me. Oh. Um, he, he did. As for me. He came to my room last night unannounced and then it's hard for me to even say. He abused me, yeah. What? And he, he took pictures. He said if I did not do as he asked, he would show them to everyone. So I, I had no choice. Damnation! Th that's a crime, an absolute crime. What the fuck? Why don't the taco would never do that? Even ask you, Taka. He, I mean, I knew he got a little crazy, but I never imagined he would would go that far. <laughs> it was amazing how completely he bought it. I can't express how enjoyable that was. I'm about to say something I've never said before in my life. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to f f fucking kill him. Most unfortunate. Wait, please. If you go now, you will be playing right into his hands, yeah? Hmm? Actually... Taka is planning to use her to escape. And he has made you in his talk. What? Escape? You don't mean... <sighs> Taka is going to try to kill you, yeah? <laughs> Indeed. And also he can keep her to himself. <laughs> The, the bastard. Bastard, 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 bastard. Honestly. Can we allow him to continue with these barbaric acts? <laughs> Absolutely not. How could I? She. She. I swear! I have I to save her. save her! Actually. Then would you like to join with me? It just so happens I have come up with a plan <laughs> now. <laughs> I've devised a bit to with him, but he has stolen. And I scrubbed this dreadful school. <laughs> and with that, it is complete. Hmm? Huh? What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, nothing. <laughs> and Fumi agreed without a second thought. The effect that item had on him was remarkable. The power of love. Even a love as twisted as that can still drive people mad, it would seem. Uh, um. You disgust me. I see. I have another question for you. Was that strange costume of Fumi's creation? Indeed. Yeah, it was a real pain in the butt, too. All I asked him to do was make something to hide the face and general body size. I had no idea he'd make something like that. Well, it's my fault for picking him in the first place. What? So, why'd you decide to make me the suspect? Hmm. Because you're stupid. <gasps> That's it? Let's see. And in that regard, I made the right choice. I'm so glad your stupidity surpassed my every expectation. <laughs> Life must have been tough on your parents, though. <sighs> I feel like I could cry. Well. But when you were explaining your plan to Fumi, how did you explain the part about him playing dead? Well, what she's asking is, what was Fumi supposed to do after that, assuming you'd actually let him live? Are you okay with this? That's simple. After he did his part and pretended to be dead once someone showed up, I told him say he'd been seriously wounded. He was on the verge of death, but he just barely held mm. on. And he really believed that? <laughs> well, of course. That wasn't all there was to it. As I explained it to Hifumi, the plan was, while you were all questioning him about what had happened to him, I was going to murder someone else. At that point, Hifumi would have an alibi, so nobody could doubt him. I told him that, and he believed it. Hmm. It all seems very straightforward. Stereotypical. <laughs> I just matched the lie to the level of the opponent, in fact. If we ate it up, he believed the lie wholeheartedly, right up until the moment of his death. So in the end... So you had planned to kill him all along? <laughs> but of course. There would have been no point to my plan if the one who pretended to be dead did not end up dead himself. What the heck? How can human life mean so little to you? Well, that's a non-issue. I simply did everything in my power to win. Don't be mean! Now you sound like Biakia. I wonder about that. No. He derives his pleasure from the thrill of the hunt. In that aspect, we are nothing alike. Why? Then, what made you take things this far? What the heck? Was it really just for money? Hmm. 
Are you talking about the $10 million Mona Kuma offered us? That is a lot of money, it's true. <sighs> but that's not all there is to it. From the moment our new life here began, my only thought has been explained. But... 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 All you've been saying is how we have to accept living here. You little bitch! Obviously, that was a lie. <laughs> hey! I couldn't take it. I hated it from day one. More than anyone, anyone, anyone else in here. You little bitch! I wanted bitch. to get out. Every day was fresh torture. Do you want to know why, huh? This is fine. Because I had a dream. And accepting life here would have meant nothing less than giving up on my dream forever. Honestly. There was no way that I could ever do that. In the underground world of gambling, I risked my life to make a metaphorical pill. As for me... It was all for that dream. And what was this dream of yours? Isn't it wonderful? To live in a European castle. A c castle <laughs> That is very cool. And to gather handsome men from all over the world to serve as my butler slash bodyguards. I was going to make them dress up like vampires and satisfy my every need. Once I obtained that, I would create a perfectly aesthetic world of decadence. This is fine. Living the rest of my life there was my only dream, my only goal. That's what life is all about. I, you know what? <sighs> I agree with you, Celeste. That would be a really fucking awesome dream to accomplish. So if anybody wants to give me a European castle and sign up to be my vampire butlers, you know where to find me. In shitty ass Ohio. <laughs> Combined with my own winnings, Monokuma's ten million dollars have made that dream a reality. I got right to the edge. There is but nothing to be done. Unfortunately, my dream has been scattered to the wind. Still, I don't have any regrets. I pursued my dream to the very end, so why would Just I? Just the worst. You sound so passionate, but you were really able to kill your own friends for oh. it. Are you asking me to feel guilty? That's a pointless endeavor. I think nothing of sacrificing others for my own ends. I feel nothing. Do you understand? That's all there is to me. That's what makes me complete. <laughs> Isn't it terrifying how different our values are? There's simply no room for understanding. What is this? That's what we should be saying. And plus, how can you be so calm? Don't you realize you're about to die? Aren't you scared? <laughs> my ability to lie is unrivaled, and I take pride in that. It's not just other people. I can even fool my own emotions. The conscious deceives the unconscious. And that's why you're not scared? Yes, indeed. That's right. I don't fear death. Kill me however you like. <sighs> but you know, if I could be reincarnated, if I had a choice... Isn't it wonderful? I think I'd like to come back as Marie Antoinette. Hey! You just get executed again. <laughs> so I smiled then. And what she did... It looked to me like a poor effort to force it. She claimed she could fool her own feelings, but that statement itself must have been her final lie. And that weak fake smile is what betrayed her. Chills! 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 Right. Okay, then let's get rolling! The black and disturbed the peace and must pay the price! Now then, I now prepared then. a very special punishment! For her! The ultimate gambler! Let's get it! I guess I'll let Kyoko hold on to this. What? This is... Will it really give you the hope you're looking for? I can't say I ever saw it that way. Which is why... Actually, it's not important. Well then, take care everyone. Perhaps we'll meet again in another life. Celeste, even though you're terrible at this game, you're my spirit animal. You're fucking crazy. And I love you. We have the same dream. <laughs> we just want vampire butlers. Is that so bad? Yeah, I think it's wrong to want a vampire butler. For your every fucking need. We just want the same thing. The Versailles Beach. Yes! Do it! Do it!
burner. They hit her with a fucking truck. Like, what? That's fucked. <laughs> wow. N nice going. Good job. You did it. This video is going to take forever to edit. I hope you guys fucking enjoy it. <laughs> it's over. The third execution is over. And there's like five of us left. What the hell? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, I guess seven, including me. So let's kill my friend so I can't pity her. But I also can't deny that at one point I considered her a friend too. And Brenda just come along and... <laughs> Isn't it just awful? Someone couldn't cut free of their regrets from the outside world, and so more people had to die. Extreme! You guys are still young! You need to place more value on your lives! What are you gonna do? Jeez! Here, I thought you guys were gonna pass the torch of hope to the next generation! Let me out of here! Well, what do I care about hope? I'll throw it in the trash you just let me Too out of bad. here! You're all the body made of hope, whether you like it or not! And it's my destiny to knock you down one by one! Sad, yes it is, but that really just can't be avoided. Don't talk like you're not responsible. How are you gonna make us keep going through this? What do you want from us? God, I'm so sick of people asking me that. Give it a rest already. Hmm. So anyway, Kyoko, did I see you get some kind of a key type object from Celeste? Hey, hey. So uh, what's the deal with that? Wah wah. Huh? What's the matter? So then. I'll answer your question if you answer mine. You. What did you do? What did you do to me? Who? What? Hey. Answer me. What did you do to my body? Who? How exciting. Do you want me to say it in front of everyone? Oh man. What did you mean? What did I do? I have no idea. I don't know anything about it! Uh, what was that just now? The mastermind did something to Yoko's body? What does that mean? Yeah. Okay, things are getting kind of awkward. I think it's about time I get out of here. Well? Meanwhile, you guys can go on enjoying your school life. If you get lonely, give me a shout. Not that I'll do anything about it, of course. See ya! <laughs> See ya! Hanakuma disappeared, leaving us all depressed and in despair. Although it wasn't all despair. There was one small hope. Hey, Kyoko. Monokuma already mentioned it, but what's that key that Celeste so... gave you? Most likely, it's the key to one of the dressing room lockers. Huh? What? Then that means... Hmm. Celeste probably hid it in there. Hey! I suppose sometimes it's easiest to miss what's right beneath your nose. Well, then we better go check. Indeed. Good idea. We left the courtroom and rushed to the dressing room. And I'm going to end the episode there. Thank you so much for enduring that class trial. It seems I get worse and worse at these, guys. I am so sorry. Um, like if this episode helped you at all like maybe yourself or maybe you actually liked it i don't know i know it's really quiet during the whole thing i'm like really wrapped up into it and i was really confused going into it myself so i wasn't exactly sure what was going on so yeah sorry about that comment if you knew who the killer was all along yay <laughs> or comment if you were surprised that was actually celeste um, subscribe because it helps you keep up with this series and other upcoming series. And, you know, until next time, all you wonderful people, stay great!